I knew this would be handy out the rough. Hi, I'm Paul and this is The Golf Show. I'm Paul Hemlin, welcome to The Golf Show. On the show this week, I've got a new club to try out. I'm gonna unbox the new PXG driving iron. I can't wait to get my hands on this club, but I'm gonna go and do it inside in the swing center because it's absolutely freezing here today. Okay, here we go. We're gonna unbox the PXG driving iron. So let's see what we've got. I ordered this seven weeks ago. Uh, PXG said it would take six weeks, but we had Christmas in between. And they did send me an email to say there'd been a delay with one of the components. Uh, which was fair enough, so no problem there. Okay. You've never played like this before. So we've got, we've got the shipment notes with the spec. Got the iron, nicely protected our little head cover. Got some PXG stickers as well. This is the new Gen 4 X driving iron. 18 degrees, there's no option on the loft on the club. Mine's fitted to three degrees upright, which is my spec. Um, PXG aren't fitting for these, so it was lucky for me that I've been fitted for my irons by PXG before, so I knew what to do in terms of lofts, lies. They've given me a slightly heavier plus two gram weight in there as well. Um, I went for the all black option. These are around about 299. I paid a little bit more because I went for the Mitsubishi shaft, which was a bit of an upgrade. They do come in a steel finish, which looks beautiful. You can see the milling a little bit better on the steel one I think, but look at that, black head, black shaft, black grip. My first thought is, look at that sole, it's a lot narrower than I'd expect for a driving iron. The last Gen 2, so this is Generation 4, they didn't do a Generation 3 driving iron, the last Gen 2 driving iron for PXG had a really fat sole, I'll put a picture up on the screen so you can compare it. I don't think there could be any argument that PXG make pretty looking clubs, but for £309, which is what I've paid, this thing has got to perform really well. PXG say this is low spin, low launch, fast ball speed, it's going to have a penetrating flight, it's got tight dispersion, it's going to give you optimum forgiveness and outstanding feel and sound. Okay, it certainly looks the part, let's check it out. PXG say this club was tour inspired to give you a low penetrating ball flight. It's got the hollow head, the X-Core technology. It's got the thinnest face on any club in golf. 1.55 millimeters, that face. That should give you a really big sweet spot and lots of feel. Typical for PXG, you've got the weights in the back there. These are adjustable when you get fitted um, to give you optimum performance. Part of the reason for the hefty price tag on these is these are forged from soft carbon steel and they're five times forged. You know, like when you get your chips that are double fried, well this club is five times forged. That should give you really good feel. It should also prolong the life of the grooves and enhance the looks of the club. I've gone for the extreme dark finish here. That's using a diamond-like carbon paint. PXG put three coats of that on the club. Most other manufacturers, when they do black clubs, only put one. I had some Vokey wedges that were black and pretty soon they all scruffed up. Didn't look so nice. Wow. Okay, enjoyed that one. So today we're gonna to review the PXG Gen 4 driving iron. This has just come out. I wanna talk about why you might or might not wanna put one of these in your golf bag. I'm a seven handicapper. Should I even be considering one of these bad boys? 18 degrees. So we're gonna talk tech, we're gonna talk pricing. We're gonna talk, is this something that you can use off the deck as well as off the tee. I mean, it's called a driving iron, so probably the clue's in the name, but I'm gonna try that out. I wanna go inside and test it on the launch monitor. I wanna see the launch angle and angle of descent, because that might help me figure out if this goes in the bag, what's coming out? What does this club look like at address? To be honest, it's not as intimidating as you might have thought. It's 18 degrees, that's a bit less than a hybrid. Pretty thin top line there. Sits nicely behind the ball. I like that white line at the bottom so you can line it up. Okay, so here's another consideration. Last year I retired the four iron and I just used the hybrid now. So my longest iron is the five iron, which you can see here. 
the driving iron is quite a lot longer it's 40 and a half inches so that's maybe two inches longer than a five iron that's the difference of the dress there as you can see though as I was saying the top line of the driving iron doesn't look super fat compared to a normal iron oh call that one a bit thin a bit slicey estimated carry 191 total calorie and roll 213 oh that was a much better strike lovely flight that's gone 193 rolled out to 215 Didn't catch that great, but it's not bad. It's pretty forgiving. Slightly cut across that decent strike. 211, 215, 211 so far. Let's try one more. Have to say, this is really nice to hit. Launches very well. Looking down on top of it, it's got quite a thin top line. Doesn't look that much different to one of my other irons. Oh yes, couldn't have hit that any better, 205 carry 228, that was my Sunday best. Okay, so we've had 210, 215 and when I really caught it, a 230 just about. So let's see what in my bag currently goes those distance. Is it the hybrid, is it the 5 wood? Okay, let's give the hybrid a test. This is 22 degrees, watch out Mr Squirrel. Good job that squirrel moved. <laughs> nice strike, not my best. 222. Um, straight away you can notice the flight of the hybrid was so much higher as you'd expect than the driving iron. Let's clip a few more. That's a beauty. Nice high flight. That's gone 195, 217. Similar distance to the driving iron. Kind of bludgeon that one. Still going out there 220. Hybrid did pretty well there, apart from the first one. Let's try the five wood. So this is the PXG Gen 2 five wood. Had this a couple of years. It is probably, in fact it actually is, the least used club in my bag. I tend to use driver off a tee unless it's a par three. Maybe if it's really narrow, that could be where the driving iron comes in. This might get used once every couple of rounds. If I leave myself with that kind of distance, maybe into a green, not a great tee shot, I've probably chipped out the tree, something like that, and I've got a long way left in. I think because I haven't used it that much, I'm not super confident with it. So when I bought the driving iron, I was thinking this would be the one to go. Well, let's see how it gets on. See if we can put up a fight for a place in my bag. Oh, hello. That's gone 236 carry of 212 pretty impressive oh, I didn't catch that brilliantly it's on the right edge of the fairway though 232 again this is going a bit further now I know I'm talking PXG 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 but I am independent I pay for all of my equipment I get no discounts I get no incentives from any manufacturer the golf show is 100% independent I promise you if I don't like something I will tell you guys oh wow 232 again. Well, that's really interesting. Okay, so that throws a cat amongst the pigeons, doesn't it? The five wood, which would be the club that I thought would go, is going 232. So I don't think that's going to be leaving the bag. So it's, could it be a head-to-head -head between my lovely hybrid and the new driving iron? They were going similar distances around the sort of 220 mark. Of course, I didn't mention that was you can hit a five wood and you can hit a hybrid off the deck. Can you hit one of these? Is it called a driving iron for a reason? Let's go and clip a few of these off the deck and see what we can do. Call that one a bit fat. That's gone 150. Call that really nice, 208. Wow. Two ten. They went a little better than I thought. Would I really want to use one of these off the deck though? I don't know. It's a high tariff shop. I've just had an idea. If the five wood's going to stay and I love my hybrid, maybe there's another option. But you're going to have to stay tuned to the end of the episode to find out what that could be. Maybe hit 20 or 30 shots with the driving iron. But look, 
Oh, it's got a bit of wear on the face. It could just be bits of the ball. I'll give that a scrub when I get inside, but something to keep an eye on. Okay, so I've just been to pick all those balls up, and the ones I hit with the driving arm were in a really small dispersion there, so that's a good sign. It's really cold now, so I've rang Guy. He's going to put the kettle on. I'm going to head down to the swing centre. We're going to carry on testing the driving iron in the warmth inside. Okay, so thankfully I'm back inside now. It was bitter cold out there with Guy Wills, head pro at Fulford Golf Club. Hi, Guy. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you, Paul. Good. Thanks for coming back on the show and thanks for helping me out. So I've got a driving iron. Okay. I've never had one before. Do you sell many? We sell a few. Yeah. Um, it tends to be a kind of your faster swing speed, better yeah. player if you're going to pigeonhole that. Um, but yeah, we, we do sell a few, yes. Excellent. And what I'm trying to figure out is if I do put this in my bag, what comes out? So it goes about the same length as my hybrid. You know I love my hybrid. So I'm trying to work out what to do. I did hit a few out on the range. Really liked it off the tee. Off the deck, not so sure. But I'm keen to try on your uh, launch monitor uh, to work out the launch angles and the descent angles because then that will really see whether this is something you should hit off the deck or whether, as it's called, a driving iron, it just stays off the tee. Yeah, I, I mean, I would put it up against the five wood and yep. against the hybrid and, and potentially yep. then maybe drop in one of the wedges. Oh, okay. Um, so we'll just have to see what the numbers give us and, uh, and work it out okay. from there. But I would always keep it anyway, even yep. if it's not in all the time, yep. um, bringing it out in windy conditions, yep. playing different styles of golf. golf. Absolutely. Yep. St Andrews, for your example, be perfect to keep that ball a little bit lower, yep. um, which you don't necessarily need every time you play around Fulford, yep. but it's there as a backup but it, as you say, it's finding which one you would drop yep. uh, to not have too many in your bag. Great, well, let's give it a go. Let's give it a whirl. Just a quick comparison here, because Guy's got a lot of stock in the shop, and this is the Ping Crossover, which is the Ping driving iron. Again, they've gone for the black head. Similar width of sole. Probably half an inch shorter, I'd say the Ping's 40 inches. Hit the line, hit the line. Oh. Ooh. Thinners are winners. Yeah, that wasn't pretty. Yeah, so the hybrid is going to go a lot lower than the driving <laughs> iron. <laughs> Look at it again. It's got miles right. That was struck better. Oh, it fell over. The driving iron, you're going to be taking that off the tee, yep. playing on the, uh, the windier holes. So for me, the driving iron would definitely be better in your bag when you're yep. playing a windy day or a, a course where you need a little bit more of a penetrating flight, the hybrid coming in, stopping a little quicker. The question is, where does the five wood sit in the yeah. bag? Especially you said you're not that confident using the five wood. Um, I would yeah. either keep practicing with it or have that ability to switch between the hybrid and the driving iron. Okay, cool. Um, but yeah, some good numbers. Well, thanks. Good numbers there. Thanks, that guy. So I'm going to take it out on the course now. I'm thinking holes like the 8th at Fulford, the 12th at Fulford's got to be made for a driving iron. Definitely. So I'm going to do a bit of filming out the course, see how I get on. Thanks a lot, Guy. Perfect. Wow. Okay, so that was interesting. I used the driving off the tee at the second here at Fulford. Left myself 213 from the flag. Took the hybrid first, and that's finished just here. And I thought I'd have a go with the driving iron, and it's finished just there. So, not a massive amount of difference there. Obviously, the driving iron flew lower. That's right, that first shot was a driver, and I know this is a driving iron review. What I want to do now is see how much distance I'm giving up by playing the driving iron against the driver. So let's go find those two shots. Okay, neither of those are my best shots. I'll give them both B-, minus, but that's real life, isn't it? That's real golf. You're not always going to hit your best shots. So let's go and see how much shorter the driving iron is to the driver. Place my golf bag down there where I hit the driving iron. Can you guess the difference between this drive and that driving iron? Neither of them were great, but I'd say they were both comparable in terms of strike quality. Well, the driver's gone 59 yards longer. So that's a massive difference. That's five or six clubs difference into the green. It could be the difference between me being able to reach this long par four or not. 59 yards. 
Could go back for my bag now. That's another fair way. I've not missed one with this thing yet today. That's incredible. A tight little winter tea on the 11th at Fulford. And it's another fairway found for this bad boy. Okay, so if any hole at Fulford was built for a driving iron, it's this beauty behind me, the 12th. 317 yards off the back, par four. This is where Ian Woosnam's record number of birdies came to an end on this little innocuous hole. It's tight, left is dead, right. You might find your ball in summer, you might not, depends on whether they grow the rough up in the trees. And it's got an upturned green. No bunkers on here, there's no tricks. It is exactly as you see it. So let's see how the driving iron gets on on this hole. Not my best, but that's a fairway. Let's try again. Fairway number two. That was nice. Fairway number three. This is great. <laughs> okay, so that was three on the fairway, one in the trees. That tee was a little bit higher than I would have used, but I had to use the mat. Pretty happy with that. Three out of four on the fairway. That's brilliant for me. I'm really happy with that. This hole. You never know what to hit on it. You can hit driver, anything this side, which is the left, you're dead. Anything in those trees over there, not great. You know, if you get too close, that green can be tricky. I think I might have just found my go-to club for the 12th. Wow. Well, that's it for this week, guys. What did I think of the PXG Gen 4 driving iron? I've got to be honest, I really like it. It looks beautiful. It feels great when you hit a nice one. I've barely missed a fairway today, which is not like me. I've been surprised how many times I could use it. I think it's going to be obvious which holes you can use it on and which holes you should use driver. On the fourth, we saw the driver went 60 yards further. So it's a no brainer. You need to get it down there. But fourth was quite tight. I think this could be a real asset here. What am I going to take out the bag though? Well, I think the five wood needs to stay and the hybrid certainly does. So I'm going to take out my 60 degree wedge. See how I'll get on without that. Maybe get the 56 bent to 58. See how we get on. Looking forward to going to St Andrews in a few weeks and trying this out on the links. I'll keep you posted about that face and whether it scuffs up on it. I hope it doesn't. £309. I expect a lot from a golf club for £309. Really like this club. This is an independent review. I pay for all my own equipment. So I hope you enjoyed this show, guys. If you have, give us a like. If you're new, give us a subscribe. And I'll see you next time on The Golf Show. I hope you enjoyed the episode of The Golf Show. To watch another, click here. To subscribe, click here.